we are the drone detection team. Um, our mission is to passively detect and take down drones um, using FAA regulations, but it could possibly be abroad also. My name is Brooke. I'm the writing major. Matthew, I'm an uh, engineering major. Uh, Bailey, science major. Anna Rose, nursing major. Jack O'Neill, total analysis major. <laughs> All right, some of our hypotheses were, is it reasonable to assume the drone is an enemy because we may not have enough time to identify the drone and it's coming towards um, a classified area or somewhere we do not want to be located, then we just need to take it down. Um, and we tested this theory with all of our interviews this week and it seems that that is mostly true, that we can just immediately take it down. Um, and then this thing, technology support, um, our solution, mostly no, but we can add to it or we can modify what is currently there. Um, and then can we implement our solution in the U.S. with police forces? Uh, yes, there aren't many, there are FAA regulations on drones, but they aren't very specific with taking down drones and things like that. And they, every police officer has a computer in their car and it is possible that we could add a solution for them too. So our customer survey methods, so when we were working on our um, a comic this week, we did a lot of work with drones, kind of seeing how, um, kind of mimicking what our process would look like. Um, we're also going to just mention a couple of things about kind of our, the way we're going with the solution, about a couple of interviews during this. Um, we talked uh, to a couple of people who were um, CIA and um, areas like that and talked to us about our solution um, while we might have a couple different applications, it's good that maybe we can look into a modular solution. So based on where the system is being deployed, um, there would be certain pieces that they would take or not take uh, to lighten the load or to if it's a, versus AMRAP versus being carried on top of a building or a mountain, um, that kind of realm. And then looking into more and more, with air, like our client is the Air Force, um, trying to figure out are these people on the ground or what are they doing? And a big aha moment and insight for us was that um, Air Force has down pilots. There is a team, there are people that are working the Air Force that are going to go out, find this person who's frightened, scared, injured, wherever they are, go out there in harm's way, they're going to need to have something that can be deployed um, forward to use this. And looking back at our mission model campus, um, just kind of looking more into our uh, beneficiaries as well as really, um, we, we're starting to get a little more contact with our um, client to figure out who these people that are actually going to be carrying out the missions would be. Um, in the Air Force, um, as well as just kind of the still waiting on more of a narrow scope of where it's going to be deployed as far as the um, terrain. So uh, we did this in regards to controlling airmen, and one of the pain critiques that we focused on during the interviews was that this technology already exists. The type that we're looking for to detect and take down the drone. However, it's not in the extent that we need it to be, so it exists, but it's not all put together. So in addition to doing research um, that we need to conduct furthermore, we spoke to someone who had experience operating drones in the Army, and he explained to us some concepts that we haven't thought of before. So instead of just detecting the drone and focusing on taking out the drone itself, another thing we could focus on is taking out the signal or even the site itself and something else to focus because in the end like that drone could have a lot of powerful information in it if we did take it down in the sense that we take the signal out because then we'd be able to retrieve some of the information on it because like maybe they have some sort of a black box system of memory so we'd be able to do that and another thing is that if you take out the signal, it would help prevent lives from being taken. So that's just another thing. Um, our benefit this year is still the male-female experiment overseas. Uh, the customer uh, workload is uh, basically some uh, down pilot who uh, uh, was shot out of the sky, needs to get down safely, and is now hostage in the territory. And so he is probably in restricted uh, airspace. Uh, and he may need permission from his uh, commanding officer to deploy this system uh, in the field or whether or not they want 
uh, the system out there or not, depending on the situation. And so uh, they'd have to get permission or uh, get permission prior to taking out a uh, fine. Um, yeah. And then if it was a port, they could uh, would hopefully work well and take out any drugs. So our minimum viable product is based off of a system that Russia currently has uh, deployed. Uh, they call it Repellent One. Um, it's, uh, it is mounted on uh, like the body of a truck. Um, so what it does is it is able to detect drugs at 30 kilometers away uh, using their control signal. It detects their control signal and it can position them and identify them um, and all that kind of stuff. And then Take them out, it uses either jam the control signal or um, interfere with the satellite navigation of the drone. And um, yeah, so we're still learning more about that system. That's uh, the overall gist of it. Our plan for this week is more to talk to our sponsor and um, get a little bit of a clearer uh, sight of the problem than we already have. Um, and we also may be putting together little scenarios of our solutions and running it by our sponsor. Like instead of just saying, oh, what do we do? We're going to now um, describe a solution that we come up with and see if that's okay or how we need to change it. So we're coming up with the um, all encompassing kind of overall way we're at, what research we've done, what we found, and our way forward. Um, it has been two weeks since we haven't heard from our sponsor with intermittent emails every 48 hours. Uh, so I'm going to that and maybe get back to them hopefully soon. All right. One, two, three. Question. Um, so you said that these are solutions um, exist already, but then they aren't put together. What do you mean? Um, not solutions. The technology exists or is being worked on, like they're individual parts of the solution. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's, it's like there's something that exists that uh, is a net in which a parachute that can be launched at drones and capture them, bring them safely to the ground. But that's not attached to, uh, you know, an uh, unmanned system that actively detects and locks on. So how do you make drone defender, you know, certain gun is in place with the drone, which is a uh, dome that they use at the um, uh, Super Bowl, and then pair that with currently, you know, 5590 batteries with the ATAC devices that military already has with their Android. So how do you integrate all those systems in a um, way that these airmen can carry throughout, right? So that's that's what I mean by taking just the off-the-shelf products, putting them together in a uh, compatible way. That's uh, yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Um, what were your metrics of success again from your mission on campus? There is a mission achievement and impact factors. Uh, we don't have that uh, filled out. Okay. And maybe you have to like knock out something yet. Like, that. I don't know. Okay. We're more focusing on the value pro uh, proposition beneficiaries right now. Okay. Oh, uh, so I wanted to ask. So you're, you're, one of your beneficiaries is a down pilot. So uh, do you have any idea of what the mortality rate is for down pilots and what uh, if they are not dead after crashing the plane or ejecting themselves? If they eject themselves from the plane, do they have a certain kit that um, is attached to the body uh, when they're ejected? Well, one thing that we discovered today was during one of our interviews, we were speaking to someone with Navy experience, and when we were saying, like, we don't get what the point is, like, why, it seems like we're having, like, a misconception between Army and Air Force, like, why would the Air Force need to be on the ground for this? And basically, we explained that the Air Force is on the ground when they go to, like, retrieve, like, lost airmen, like, in that concept. So there are people that are out there searching for them. So I guess my question was, this is the solutions that you're thinking about. It's not going to be something that's resident with the pilot necessarily. You don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, the, the thing that I was talking about that Russia has, I don't know how big that is. I mean, it's not on a truck. It's probably too big for a pilot to carry. Uh, putting in the plane might not work because if you eject, it's kind of, you know, how far the plane is. Um, so, uh, you know, we have to look at that. Maybe it could be placed on a larger drone and, you know, 
Um, this is like half question, half comment, but like you were just touching on it. I, you said it was called repellent one, the thing that Russia uses. Uh, like, how do you want your solution to differ from theirs? Like, obviously, if theirs was perfect, then like you guys could just use it. So, like, have you guys thought about like what about it is deficient or? Or I mean, it's it's not the U.S. military can't. You know, they're I think they're So there's only so much research that I can do, you know, from like. Through, like looking at the sources that Russia provides. Sure. sure. Uh, so, something that you said brings up a question in my mind. Uh, I could see the scenario, I appreciate the scenario of down the airmen. Um, what about the are they concerned at all about interference with, uh, with, with controlling flights and things like that? Or is that, is that a driver? Have you gotten a sense of that? Do you mean with GPS or can you interfering with the aircraft that are flying? We don't want to do that. That was one thing that was brought up. Like we can't scramble GPS or anything like that. Well, well I guess I mean, is that a pain point? Is that a problem that they're trying to solve? Is the potential for enemy drones to be interfering with flights? Doesn't the air force? Air force. Right. Right. No, no response. Right. So. And is, is this a product for the down pilot or for the recovery team? Probably more for the recovery team. Let me just say I think that's something to clarify, right? Yeah. That's what I was like, I'm a little Yeah, well, you'll get comments. Right. So we're good. Right now, we're on the next one. One, two, three.